Hello and welcome to the Handy Capable Black Woman Throne Room. My view of humanity is a whole new tea. Okay, wow. One thing I kind of noticed with my YouTube channel, because I kind of don't look at the likes and unlikes much, but since I'm trying to at least slowly grow while I get everything published or in the works, I, I do look once in a while. But one pattern that I've noticed is usually when I get the unlikes is when I talk about disability or my situations with disability or ways that people can help those or be empathetic, empathetic with disability. I get unlikes and I don't know why. I don't Sometimes I would just wonder, do people think that people with disabilities don't deserve any empathy or understanding, or especially when people just come up to somebody, what's wrong with you? What happened? What's your disability? I want to know. And you've never met this person before. They're just a complete stranger who had the nerve to come up to you and ask that. But again, like I've stated in other ones, like during COVID, if people ask if you're vaccinated, if people ask if you have COVID, oh, HIPAA laws, HIPAA. I was like, I don't have to answer that. That's private. That's part like, okay, well, same thing with disability. If that's how you think with the COVID like shot and everything, think the same thing with someone's disability. It's private. It's none of your business. And it's not contagious. That's the difference. It's not contagious. You're not going to get it. So it's none of your business because in no way, shape, or form are you going to get what they get. So, I mean, unless it's already in your DNA and it comes later on or something like that. But I don't know. It's just really interesting when I see some of the unlikes and everything and I'm, I'm it's not gonna it's not getting to me and I'm at the same time I know I'm still kind of new and I'm still gonna be working on trying to get my videos to look more appealing and visually accepting or whatever but I'm more focused on telling my truth telling my story so that other people who have been in my situation can know that they're not alone. And especially if they're younger than me, they have more time to fix or or adjust or change so they don't end up where I'm at or where I'm trying to get out of. And while watching the episodes of The View on YouTube. It's like they were talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month and they got to the topic of African-American women and how they have a higher likelihood of dying from breast cancer. And also how when, like the doctor, oh, she laid it down. And this is one of the, like I know in one of my videos, I talked about how African-American women are not perceived or looked at. Like when it comes to being like going to the doctors and everything, doctors dismiss us. And I told that story in one of them. And that's one of the videos that people were disliking. And I had one person who, like since I have my Bridges uh, link, they found my LinkedIn and they said that I, I'm a liar and there's no racism in healthcare. And I was kind of shocked by that, but I was just like, are you serious? Because like a lot of people are not going to believe my story and my so-called fake friends on Facebook, they don't know still because especially through high school and college, they said I was lying. They said I was making it up. And like, 
one reason I'm going to say my or parts of my story and even add a little bit more details is because I am proof. I am evidence of what this doctor is saying is true because their focus was on breast cancer, but it's with disabilities and so many other diseases with my mother who died of cancer for years she was just saying something's not right here and in this spot I, I think something's wrong and the doctors kept shrugging her to the side until it was too late and she died of cancer she died and my mom she bought organic food she was pretty healthy like and I won't say she always did organic it was more like when we were I think I was in high school, middle school or high school when that started, because she started learning more about organic food and things, but always ate like the ve- her vegetables and she would go on her walks at the park or at the mall. And it's like, I don't know, she took her vitamins and just watching her die the way that she did and knowing that for years she kept telling the doctor something's wrong the doctors didn't care and this is one reason i have trust issues with doctors i do and i think i always will and so with my case it took over 30 years for them to listen to me they kept saying i was a liar they kept saying i was a liar that I just wanted attention, I was making it up. And just, do you know how low my self-esteem was? Because the doctors would say this, and so when I get home, I'm getting punished, I'm getting yelled at, I'm being told that I'm nothing but a liar. Because that's when it started, like, being called a liar is because of how I walked. You're just making that up if you don't pick up your feet. And yeah, it's like, I know one episode I did it just like my mom. So I'm going to not do that anymore because that even, that brings back memories a little bit too much. But anyway, growing up where doctor after doctor ignores you. And when it came to sports, when it came to ballet, I was trying my best. But then my coaches, my ballet teacher kept saying I wasn't good enough. I wasn't trying. I wasn't putting in the effort. Mm -hmm. I wasn't jumping high enough. I wasn't doing this long enough. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? I am working my butt off. When I was at home, I would be practicing and I would be trying to stretch because I'm like, okay, she says I'm not kicking high enough. So I would be practicing trying to do the splits, but I couldn't do the splits. I didn't know why. I couldn't do a cartwheel but my twin sister could. And that's another thing. Since my twin sister is quote unquote normal, they were like, no, nothing's wrong with her. So nothing's wrong with her. And they didn't do any tests. They just put me in front of the doctors and told me to walk or had me walk. I was an infant. So I don't remember it, but they, I remember my parents said they took me to the doctors and the doctor said, oh, she's fine. But then year after year, She's making it up. It's in her head. Okay, so if, so when I was a toddler, I still think how much of a genius, like, because I was called stupid and dumb so many times, but in the back of my head, I'm like, well, to you guys, to the doctors, I was smart enough to want attention when I was an infant to drag my feet. I It's like I must have been some kind of smart because if I started this when I was a toddler, but then you guys say I'm a lying, I'm making it up, I want attention, but I planned this all the way when I was a toddler. I, I must not be that stupid. I must not be that stupid. And I'm gonna be getting to one of the stories of when I was quote unquote stupid, but they still don't know. Yeah, my ex-boyfriend, Mr. No Heart, who absolutely had no heart and, mm, anyway but and oh even with him it's like he didn't really like he he was like oh yeah something's wrong with her or he would tell the neighbors that and I don't even how he dismissed my disability 
And when I broke up with him, he was like, oh, well, you still don't know what you have. It was something like that. I have, I think I screen, screenshot the text. When I find it, I'll post it. But uh, I still remember telling him when I was finally diagnosed. I'm diagnosed now. I know what happened. And then he told me that I had to tell him because I dated him for so many years. Um, you're mistaken. You didn't go to the hospital. You didn't like call me to check up on me. You didn't come and visit. You didn't support me or even come to any of my tests that where I had over 20 tests that I had to go through before I got diagnosed. Did he have? No, but okay. Back to, cause yes, yeah, like in the, he has something to do with it because I went to doctor after doctor after doctor. And then when I would go to his house, how was the doctor's appointment? He said that I just need to go home and lose weight. Oh, okay, so are you going to do that? No, it's like I can't work. Like my body hurts too much. My my leg, my knees hurt. I can't. I was literally like to the point where with this jerk of a doctor, which I have his info, I'm going to be putting him on an episode really soon because I'm petty, frustrated, and yes, I'm going to enjoy it. But anyway, he doesn't even realize I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to lose weight for so many years. Everyone kept telling me, oh, you'd be so much prettier if you were skinnier, if you're if you were um, this or that. And, and so while I was cleaning up my room a few months ago, do you know how many diet pills I had all around my room? And... To the point where years ago, like when I, I couldn't really walk anymore, but I was trying to do P90X on my knees. I was in so much pain. I had to do it on my knees. And so when this guy told me, go home and lose weight, I'm like, and the thing, I wasn't even that over, like, yeah, I'm a plus size woman, but I'm not like, like he acted like, and he weighs more than me. He's older than me. So when I told him my knees hurt, he'd even test. He'd even say how much pain. He didn't He didn't ask any questions. He literally just said, go home and lose weight. And then he smirked and walked out the hall and shook his head and laughed some more. And then while I remember leaving out the doctor's office, I am literally holding on to the wall because I'm in so much pain. I'm li- literally, and he's watching. I remember he watched me. He didn't have anything to say. He just laughed. He thought it was funny. He thought my pain was funny. <laughs> just go home and lose weight. And then even when I was younger with, oh, I'm going to, sh- sh- yeah, I'm going to show a lot of doctors. The, and the funny thing is, or the not funny thing is, one reason why I know I can sue is this one female doctor that I had from eighth grade until she had to quit. They And they still wouldn't really tell us why. But with my, she would always tell my mother I was making it up. I was lying. Don't pay me any mind. It, like, I'm, yeah, just basically dismiss me when... And because my walking was getting worse and the doctor and my mom were noticing, but my doctor was just like, nothing's wrong with her. She's just lazy. So then I would get punished for being lazy. Punished. I'm not going to go into the details in this episode, but trust me, punished. And so in college, I'm 18 now. So I'm thinking, okay, everything is just going to be between her and I. No, she called my mother and she would tell her everything about all of my appointments. And so then I stopped going. So then I got threatened that I better go to the appointments because the doctor's going to tell her everything. So she had to so she had to tell me I had to go because she wants to know everything. My mother and the doctor had such a tight pact. So when I try to change doctors, 
And my doctor found out. She called my mother and she said, you better not change doctors because my mother had control. My mother had control, absolute control. And the doctors had control of dismissing my pain. No one paid attention to me until I could not walk. I could not walk. I was crawling around the house for literally three or four months. Three or four months crawling. I was in so much pain. I was in fetal position in bed. So it's like you have no idea the pain. And it's like most of you would never even imagine the pain I was in. But anyways, to continue my nightmare. Uh, finally, there was a, like, I, I don't even know how many doctors I had to see. I think it was like eight or nine before I met the surgeon. And she gave me another set of x-rays. I think I had like five or six x-rays by this point. Like it was four MRIs, five x-rays. Part of me was just like, do I need to get tested because of all these MRIs and x-rays? But anyway, um, it's, I finally got to meet the surgeon. And that's when she said, you need a knee replacement. But you're so young, this makes no sense. How do you need a knee replacement? And I'm shrugging my shoulders like, I don't know. Everyone's called me a liar all my life when I told them I'm not making up why I'm, why I'm walking the way I am. Everyone was blaming me. Everyone was threatening to either spank me, not date me, not want me, not desire me, not love me. No one wanted anything to do, do with me. Everyone was blaming me. Blaming me. And now... I had, like, the thing is, what frustrates me the most and why I am so glad this doctor brought this up, because black women want our, we want to be considered. We want to be taken seriously with our health. But a lot of doctors don't care about us. They don't. Some of us think, or I think, I think some of them want, they don't mind if we die. That is my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. The doctors that I'm going to show you, I literally think that male doctor that told me to go home and lose weight, I personally think he didn't care if I lived or died. He doesn't. Because less than an, about a year and a half later, I could no longer walk. I was crawling, and I had to have a knee replacement. And my surgeon told, when, like, once I woke back up or like even like when my surgeon went to see my dad and sister in the waiting area and my aunt she said I'm in her top five or of most difficult surgeries and she says she's like I think she's number three of most difficult surgeries and then it took about five to seven people to force my leg into a leg brace And she had no idea what was going on, but she said it was going to fix it. But then she turned out like she said some really emotionally damaging things, too, because she was still blaming me because she said all I needed was the knee replacement. But then about a year later, about a year, a year and a half later, I got diagnosed. And then she was like, oh, I'm so I'm she didn't say I'm sorry, but she was like, I found out your diagnosis and I was I was wrong. I was incorrect. Yeah, all of you guys were incorrect. All of you guys who blamed me because she was like, oh, well, it's like if you're not going to straighten your leg, it's because you don't want it. You don't want to. You don't want to walk right. You're never going to walk right if you're not going to like this is the kind of stuff she's saying, like while they're taking out my stitches. (laughs) So do you know how emotionally damaging it is? It's like I'm still not diagnosed, but I know it's not me. I know I'm telling the truth. And now I have evidence that it's like all these years something has been wrong, but everyone's still blaming me because now the surgeon's blaming me. But then later on, once I'm diagnosed, oh, okay, now I read your notes. But then I had to go see another podiatrist or foot knee doctor or whatever. And it's, it's the buddy of the guy who told me to go home and lose weight. And it's like, he's bragging. He was like, oh, you saw my friend, blah, blah, blah. 
and I cringed my face I like I had a resting bee faced I did and I remember when he saw my face he was like what why it's like what's wrong it's like yeah I that's one of my friends that's one of my buddies and i just shook my head because i was just like i'm a christian woman so you don't want to hear what i'm about to say, what i want to say and he was like what's wrong what happened and i told him your so-called friend told me to go home and lose weight when i was in pain because when he when this doctor saw me he, like my sister pulled me into a, in a wheelchair and stuff and i was like yeah i had to have a knee replacement and this doctor halfway didn't believe me. He didn't. He halfway didn't believe me. Because he had the nerve to say, oh, well, can I see the stitches? Because I remember even my, my sister was just like, what the, like, what? And I'm like, you know what? Since, you know, fine. It's like, I'm going to shut him up. It's like, I'm going to see his reaction. So I pull up my pants and once once he started seeing, because this is only about a month after, so you can still see, I mean, it's healing, it's mostly healed, but you can still see the scar um, really well. And oh, his face, oh, he turned, like he was already white, but he turned to Casper. Oh, yeah, Casper, Michael Jackson, but that's a different story for a different day. But um, hmm. he, he was like, oh. Oh, you, you did have surgery. Yes. And your so-called good friend told me to go home and lose weight. And he, it's like, do I look that fat to you? Do I look that big to you? He was like, actually, no. No, you don't. So why do you think he told me to, like, and my sister told me to stop, but I'm just like, no, I'm frustrated. Because for over 30 years, no one believed me. And he was one of the last docs. I saw two other doctors after him who one of them read his notes. I'll repeat. They read his notes. And they're just like, oh, he already said just go home and lose weight. Like, what are you doing to lose weight? Are you going on walks? What are you doing? So after he t like wrote that in the notes, no one would listen to me. And so it wasn't until I could no longer walk, that's when finally doctors were like, huh, maybe something's wrong. Yeah, it's like we all think doctors are supposed to be smart. I've learned throughout my life, I've learned some of these doctors are, are as dumb, like they're book smart. They might be able to remember some things, but they don't know how to treat people. They don't have any humanity, empathy, or compassion in them. They only have, like, how much money is going to get me a yacht, a boat, my, like, summer home, or my beachfront, whatever. That's what they have in their head. They don't care about our health, or at least Black women. They don't care if we live, die, or whatever. And the evidence I have is my life and then also my mother who died of cancer. For a year, she was telling doctors about different things. And it's like those exact items or things she was complaining about were the symptoms. But they didn't listen to her. They ignored her and they ignored me. And so now I'm suffering. Like if I had been diagnosed or now the doctors are like, oh, well, we didn't have that kind of um, technology back then but you call, but you called me a liar you called me a liar so I told you for over 30 years or at least okay I'll say 25 years because even when I was a little girl I would be like I I don't know why I walk like this. I just walk like this. I remember when I was little, I, I said that. And the doctor whispered, like, she would, sometimes they would whisper, but sometimes they'd say it out loud. It's like she's making it up. Tell her to pick up her feet. Make her practice at home. And that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, I would just say, look at me now. I am now having to go through physical therapy for the rest of my life wear leg braces and go through like 
different shots and medications. And I probably would have needed the medications, but it's just now I have to go through a lot of the things in pain because I'm literally trying to straighten my leg back up. It's like they keep saying they didn't have, I guess, the technology back then, but they ignored me. They didn't listen to me. They called me a liar and I was the one punished. I was punished. And it's like, sometimes I wonder if I was not black, would they have done this? Would they have listened to me, paid attention to me? Because all the way back from when I was an infant, I walked like that. But then they kept saying I was making it up. I wanted attention. I was a liar. Now who's the liar? Now who's the liar? And now who has to suffer through the lies of the medical system? Guess who has to suffer through the abandonment and the cruelty? Because no one listened to me. No one cared about me. No one had compassion. So... I just had to let this out because I know some people, some people are not going to like my videos and I accept that I'm not perfect and some of my views people are going to disagree with, but I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep preaching it because my view is a whole new tea. Some people, especially who don't connect to African American women or women or people with disabilities are going to not like me. They are going to pretend my reality is fiction. But my fiction is in my stories, honey. I'm telling my truth. I'm telling my story. And I'm even putting some of my reality in my fiction. So beware. Anyways, I am the handicapable black woman. I am a woman. I am of color. And I am handicapable. But most importantly, I am human. And you're human too. Go to the doctors. Get checked. Ladies, Breast Cancer Awareness Month get checked and it's like watch out for your body do you do a monthly check listen to that part of it you're gonna learn some things pay attention tell all of your tell all of your girlfriends tell all of your girlfriends okay stay wonderful stay one stay beautiful and amazing